So knitting with lace on a brother machine, we need the auxiliary lace carriage. The lace carriage will do all the transfers. The main carriage will just do the knit rows. It's very simple looking at the lace carriage. We have F and N. N is for normal and F is for fine lace. Again, when you refer to your manual for this, fine lace means that it only picks up half of a stitch. On the underside, we have the same function for end needle selection. So we can either turn it off or turn it on. And there are small grooves. So turning it on, it will point perpendicular to the guide rail and turning it off, it will be in line with the guide rail. Ideally, you want to have end needle selection on since this will prevent the end needles trying to transfer to empty needles causing dropped stitches. So looking at the punch cards for the brother, we know it's a brother punch card. Particularly for the lace, it's quite obvious because brother lace cards will always have this black turnaround mark, but also the usual seven rows until the start line on row one. So when we look at row one, we can see the arrow is going from right to left. This is primarily due to the first pass of the lace carriage goes from left to right to pick up the pattern in the needles. We'll go through that step once we get to that point. So we have the red arrows are for the lace carriage and the black arrow will denote when to use the knit carriage and the knit carriage will always be on the right hand side, knit to the left and back to the right. Depending on the size of the project that you're using, you may want to install the extension rails, which will allow the main carriage to sit off of the main bed and the lace carriage to sit off of the main bed. So we're going to load the card to the start line. I'm going to keep the main carriage on the right and we want to install the lace carriage on the left. Now we don't want to put it in the middle of the bed because it will automatically engage the drive belt. This disengages it. If you try and put it on the middle of the bed It will move, but just ensure that your card is locked on row one as you move it up out of the way. And you want to put it up past the turn mark on the left. So we can cast on using the main carriage. Ensure that you reset your row tripper for your garment or swatch or engage it, disengage it, whatever you need to do. So I've pulled out my selection of needles and since this is just going to be a demonstration I'm just going to do a quick and simple ravel cord cast on. So I'm going to thread my carriage, set it to the tension, knit across. This is particularly a 
a good cast on if you don't have a cast on comb or for Knitmaster users and you don't use combs. So what I'm doing is laying the ravel cord in behind the gate pegs but ensuring that it doesn't sit into the hooks. So you want it between the gate pegs and the front of the needles. So coming around the first gate peg on the right of the live needles and then to the end gate peg on the left ensuring that it lays over the working yarn. Keep pressure on this as you knit back and again knit across and you can always reset it by pulling the cord out and holding it again That just gives you enough fabric that you can hang weights on. This is an open cast on though, so these stitches are not secure. They will unravel. So I'm going to knit a little bit more so I've got some extra fabric. And you can see that peg is already starting to pull away from that tail. So we have some fabric now and we can see the cast on wanting to unravel just here. This is fine if you just want to create a tension strip to get an idea of a new yarn or a new punch card to see what tension creates for the fabric rather than having to spend the time to cast on, knit the swatch, knit the next swatch, cast off. You can just say, do this type of cast on, start creating the fabric and decide, no, I don't like it. I want tension looser or tighter, etc. So now we are ready to start doing some lace. So the purpose of the lace carriage is to select needles on the first pass from the locked card and this is going to engage the drive belt and I'm making sure that my little lever on the carriage is to N and there is the pre-selected needles I'm going to unlock my card and then follow the arrows which red means to work the lace carriage and the arrow is going from right to left so that has transferred stitches in the direction that we passed the carriage whilst also pre-selecting the following row and now we have no needles out so we're going to return our lace carriage back to the left and we're going to come in with our knit carriage. Now the knit carriage is just going to close off and this is our main carriage and it is set completely for normal stockinette. There are no buttons, no levers and no dials selected. And this will engage your row counter but it will not advance the punch card. So we've done the black turnaround mark on the punch card now, which was our knit carriage. And within that mark, we can also see the red arrow going from left to right. So it's selecting the needles, transfer and selecting the following row transferring and selecting the following row which we can see there is no needles 
to work. So we're going to pass that back. And it tends to be a good rule of thumb that when all the needles are back in B position, so none of them are selected, that's when you would pass over the knit carriage. And just continue. Working like that. And you can see why it's a good idea to add in the extension rails because even though this is only a 40 stitch sample my carriages are sort of clashing against each other which you could cause damage and crack the plastic so I would recommend that you install your extension rails and make sure that the carriages have enough space to move. So say you get distracted and you're not entirely sure, you're on the mark where it has the black turnaround arrow and you're wondering, is it the knit carriage I need to do or is it the lace carriage? Have a look at your stitches and if they have closed off so they have pearl bumps on them then you know that you're ready to go for your lace carriage. What with this being a dark yarn, it can be quite hard to see where dropped stitches are. But I have just spotted one. But what I would recommend, particularly if you're working on a larger, wider piece, is that every time you pass the knit carriage to the left and back again put in a lifeline take a note of what row the card reader is on and what row the row counter is on so I'm just coming in and catching this stitch to make sure that it doesn't drop any more and you can have a go at latching it back up it may not be perfect but it's better to have a go than having an obvious oversized hole in comparison to the others so just take your latch tool coming in from the back engage that stitch make sure it goes behind the latch and you can use another pick tool or transfer tool just to catch whichever way you think and I'm just going to place that up onto one of the needles replace just to make sure that there is only one stitch on each needle because the lace carriage may struggle to transfer two stitches on the one needle so when I give that a tug I can see that has created a loop there so I'm just going to catch that up and let's close that off so 
So again, you've knit two rows with the lace carriage. I would put in a lifeline here. Take a note of the row for the punch card. Take a note of the row counter. So that you know where to move things back to. So I'm going to try adding in a weight in the centre here. Sometimes less weight is better. It really just depends on the temperament of every machine and its lace auxiliary carriage. What you can also do before you move on to the knit carriage is just to make sure all of these stitches transferred properly and then you can bring in the main carriage and that's all there really is for the brother lace sometimes you will have more passes of the lace carriage to do more transfers sometimes it might be less but I'll carry on for a little bit and then we'll show you the sample at the end as you can see you can start quite a nice rhythm going with the lace carriage and then engage in the knit carriage in between So when you're ready to stop working lace and just working stockinette then you just need to remove your lace carriage. You can decide if you want to lock your card or not and you would just use your main carriage to continue knitting your stockinette. And then you can cast off whichever way you prefer. In my case, I'm just going to drop this from the machine. And we'll show you the sample. So we can see this is the card that we used. And this is the small sample. There are some dropped stitches, but which we can see here creating unnecessary ladders but again if you ensure that you put in a lifeline keep an eye every time you do a transfer pass with the lace carriage just make sure particularly with this one because it is quite a busy design with a lot of transfers just make sure that every stitch has transferred properly and that's how easy it is to do lace on the brother machines now lace punch cards are not interchangeable from brother to knit master and this is just due to the fact of the way that the carriages work with brother we have an auxiliary separate carriage to just do the transfers with knit master we use the lace carriage which can just do transfers but it can also do simple lace which is to transfer and knit at the same time and also the way that the patterning mechanisms work in each machine are different in their process so if you're doing lace stick with the brother card so seven rows at the beginning is a brother lace card five rows from the beginning is a knit master lace card and ensure that you differentiate between the two. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment and until the next time you've been watching Button Mouse the Wee Machine Knitter.